Hello and uh, welcome to the section 2.1 video lecture. Um, I'm Dr. Scott Spaniel, uh, your instructor for this course. Uh, and so what we're going to do today is start talking about chapter 2. So chapter 2 is all about organizing um, your data. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with 2.1, which is looking at how to organize qualitative data. So to do that, uh, what you want to do is you want to take out your note sheets, which once again um, can be found uh, under this week in Blackboard or uh, on my Math Lab course, depending on the format of your course. Um, and these are, uh, make sure you're choosing your chapter two uh, note sheets. So a few definitions to start out here. So a frequency distribution, distribution, it uh, lists each category of data and the number of occurrences for each category of data. The relative frequency is the proportion or percent of observations within a category, and it is found using this formula. Relative frequency equals the frequency divided by the total number of uh, data values. Okay, so you take the frequency of a particular uh, category, so frequency of a category, I can be more specific, and you divide it by the total number of data values there are altogether. So a relative frequency I mean, sorry, a frequency, no, a, I was right the first time, a relative frequency distribution distribution lists each category of data together with its relative frequency. So instead of listing the total numbers, we list the proportion or percentage that fall in that category. A bar graph is constructed by labeling each category of data on either the horizontal or vertical axis and the frequency or relative frequency of the category on the other axis. Rectangles of equal width are drawn for each category. The height of each rectangle represents the category's frequency or relative frequency. A Pareto chart is a bar graph whose bars are drawn in descending order of frequency or relative frequency. So we go from largest, uh, the data, uh, the category with the largest number of data values down to the category with the smallest number. You can draw side by side bar graphs to compare two or more sets of data. And then we could also instead use a pie chart. So a pie chart is a circle divided into sectors. Each sector represents a category or data the area of each sector is proportional to the frequency of the category. Okay, so let's just start by going through some examples of um, reading bar charts. So this is an example of a bar graph. Uh, notice here we've got the categories are doctor um, is different doctoral degrees, so physical sciences, social sciences, other sciences, engineering, education, and professional or other. And this is an example of a side-by-side -side bar graph. So what we have is for each year, uh, for each of the fields, we have three different years. Either 1998 are the blue bars, 2002 are the green bars, and 2006 are the purple bars. And so what this allows us to do is it allows us to see how the different um, fields vary compared to one another, but it also lets us see how each field varies year to year. So uh, let's just practice reading a bar graph like this by doing a few problems. So how many more engineering doctorates were awarded in 2006 than in 2002? Well, so we go to engineering and we simply find the number of doctorates in 2006, which was 7,191, and we find the difference between that and in 2002, which was 5,079.
And so we can just subtract those. So 7,191 minus 5,079. And that's 2,112. In 2006, what percentage of doctoral recipients received degrees in physical sciences and in education? So what this is asking us to do is find the relative frequency for physical science, and for education in 2006. So in order to know that, the first thing we have to know is we have to know the total. Okay? So what we want to do is we need to add up all of the doctoral degrees in 2006. So the total would be 4,682 plus 7,538 plus 10,443 plus 7,191 plus 6,124, plus 9,618. So all of the heights of all the bars for 2006. We're going to add those all together. So the total is 45,596. So now to do the percentage for each of those, you take the number of physical science and the number of education degrees and you divide them by the total and then multiply by 100 to get the percentage. So there were 4,682 physical science doctorates out of 45,596 total. So 4682 divided by 45596 is 10.3%. And then we do the same thing for education. So 6,124 divided by the total number times 100%. Okay. So that's 13.4%. And they didn't tell me where to round to, so I just decided to round to the tenth of a percent. What field of study consistently decreased in the number of doctoral degrees between 1998 and 2006, which increased? So what they're asking is which one decreased each of the times they read it, and which so which one of the bars getting smaller the whole time, and vice versa. So in this case, the one where the bars always are going down is education, and the ones where they're always going up is professional other. Which field of study had the largest increase in number of doctoral degrees recipients in the three years of the survey? Okay, so the first thing we can do here is um, basically eliminate some of these, right? So we could definitely say this answer is not going to be physical science, right? Because it barely went up from 1998 um, to, 2000, uh, to 2006. Same as said for uh, social sciences, it went down a little bit, Educ and education. We get rid of all of those. But then we should probably check the other three. So all we have to do is figure out which one had the biggest increase. So we take we want to do other sciences, so 10,443 minus 9,061, 9,061. So that will be for other sciences. Uh, and then we'll do engineering, which is 7191 minus 5921. And then we want to do professional other. So th this one was other sciences, engineering, and this one is professional. So that one is 9618 minus 8793. So a difference of 1362. One thousand two hundred and seventy, and the last one eight hundred and twenty-five. So other sciences had the largest increase in number 
But then they also want to know what field of study had the largest percent increase in doctoral degrees between 1998 and 2006. So the key here is to have the largest increase, we need to figure out the percentage at which they increase. And the way you find the percentage increase is um, you take the change divided by where it started. Okay. So the three other, th uh, we could get rid of the same three options we gave, got rid of before, physical science, social science, and education, because they either went down or didn't increase by very much. And then we want to look at the other ones, though, and find their percent change. So we just take the amount they changed by divided by where they started. So other sciences would be 1362 divided by 9,061 times 100% is 15% increase. Engineering would be 1270 divided by 5,921. So that's a 21% uh, increase. And so notice, even though engineering had a smaller total increase, it had a bigger percent increase because it started at a smaller amount. So this one, which was engineering, had the largest percent increase. And so those are some different things we can do uh, when looking at a bar graph. So let's do another bar graph together. This is an example of a Pareto chart. So notice that we could tell this is a Pareto chart because the bars get start large and get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. So which country had the most internet users in 2007? Well, one of the nice things about a Pareto chart is that's just whichever one's on the left, right? Because that's going to have the biggest bar. So the answer is the U.S. Approximately, approximately what was the internet usage in Germany in 2007? So we just find Germany's bar, which is right here, and we look at its height. And its height is 50, but notice this is frequency in millions. So that's something we often do with big numbers is we abbreviate um, the numbers. So this wouldn't just be 50. It would be 50 million Internet users. And approximately how many more users were in China than in Germany? Well, we just need to figure out about how many were in China and then subtract away Germany. So it looks like to me that China is about 160 million because it's slightly more than 150 million minus the 50 million for Germany gives us a difference of 110 million users. Okay, so that's the idea. And then the last type of chart here we're going to look at together is pie charts. So pie charts are the same idea as what we've been looking at, except we use them. Um, they're put in a circle and you almost always write the data as percentages because the idea with a pie chart is you're talking about a percent of the whole. So pie charts really only work in situations where you're doing relative frequencies and percent of the whole. So in a case like this one, where we're only talking about the top, the previous problem, we're only talking about the top 10 internet users, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to use a pie chart because there's a lot of internet users out there besides in these 10 countries. Okay? But this case where there were only four options to the question, it makes a lot of sense to use a pie chart because we're breaking up the number of whole answers uh, down to which answer they actually get. So when you're looking at a pie chart, you just simply, uh, if you want to know what is the most commonly used approach, you just look for the largest sector of the circle, which would be this part right over here. So that would be washing your hands. What is the least used approach? Well, that's the smaller sliver, which is drinking OJ. And what percent of the population? 2%. What percent of the population thinks flu shots are the best way to beat the flu? Well, that's 25%. So we just read the percentage listed. Okay, and so that's all there is to pie charts. So what I'd like y'all to do is pause the video here for a moment and try these two pages, pages six and seven, and then after we go through those, we'll talk about how to use Google Sheets to make um, these for you so when you do the homework and things like that, you, can, uh, you don't have to draw them by hand. You can use technology to help you draw pie charts and um, frequency uh, distribu diagrams and distributions.
Okay, so now that you've had a chance to try this, let's go through these together. So how many uh, whites were living in poverty in 2006? Well, we just read the number, which is 22657. But notice it's in thousands this time, which means I need to add three zeros, right? Millions means I add six zeros. Thousands means I add three zeros. Hundreds would mean I add two zeros. Tens would mean I add one zero. Of the impoverished, what percentage were Hispanic? Well, in order to do that, we need to know the total, right? So we do 22657 plus 8969 plus 9293 plus 6138. So that's 47,057. And so we take the number that are Hispanic, which is 9293, divided by 47057. Which is times 100% is about 19.7%. Okay, and then the last question here is, how might this graph be misleading? So there's a lot of different possible answers to that, but I think the one they're looking for here is, the fact that we don't know percentage of the population for these groups as a whole. So in this case, this is one of those times when total numbers is probably not that useful. Uh, what might be a more useful number would be percentage of, or number of his uh, number of impoverished pe people per 100,000 in the population, or something like that, where we get a truer to the percentage in each group. Okay. And then the last page. So what proportion of parents felt the internet was a good thing for their children in 2000 and 2006? So we just look at good thing and we get 55% and 59%. Which opinion saw the greatest increase between 2004 and 2006? Well, that would be no effect or uh, either way. Okay, so no effect. Does a decrease in the percentage of parents who view the internet as a good thing necessarily correspond to an equivalent increase in the percentage who view the internet as a bad thing? Well, if we look here, uh, actually what we see is when this decreases, most of the change happens in no effect. So, no. The effect is split between the other two options. And then why might the percentage within each year not add up to 100%? Well, the answer for that is rounding. Um, if we have to round off decimals here, it's possible we'll get 101% or 99% or 98%. Something close to 100%, but not exactly that. Okay, so the last thing we're... So now we've talked about how to... Um, read and get information from a... Um, bar graph or pie chart that's provided for us, what uh, you can do at this point after this video ends is watch my next video, uh, which should have a link on uh, in this folder as well, um, or on my math lab as well, to look at how to do the, this page, uh, how to use Google Sheets uh, to make charts.